Okay, welcome back to Sam.gov Bids Live. Today we have episode 24, where we'll be walking through small business solicitations together on Sam.gov and answering your questions along the way so that you can start bidding and winning contracts, right, for your small business. Today, guys, we have four small business solicitations pulled up that we will be jumping into in just a second. But if you are new here as well and you don't want to miss future Sam.gov bids episodes, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the not notification bell so that you can ask your questions live on future streams, just like today. And if you do happen to be someone who's recently registered your business in Sam.gov and you're looking to get started bidding, check out my website, govkidmethod.com for free and paid resources that were designed to help support new federal contractors just like you. So we'll go ahead and take a quick upfront glance at the bids that we will be checking out today. And the first bid is going to be RSD Lodging, and this is going to be for the Army. Bid number two is going to be Furniture Management Section Services. This is going to be for the Air Force. Number three is janitor Janitorial Services at uh, Kichi uh, Gorge Visitor Center in Vermont. This is again for the Army. And then number four is going to be Organizational Consultant services for the Department of Commerce. Now, if you are not sure how these work, again, we are totally live as we do this. Um, and I've never looked at these bids ahead of time. And so we get to go through them together. And if it's messy or if it doesn't make sense or any of these things, um, questions come up, I go through that process with you live without having looked at it myself for the first time. Um, or ahead of time. That way you get to kind of see the real thought process because the whole goal of these trainings is to begin to empower you to go out um, and start exploring Sam.gov and exploring more importantly, the bidding process for your business so that you can learn to do this for yourself. Um, and if we do have anybody who's new here on the, uh, on the live stream, let me know if you are new here and just everybody, we always like to ask, where are you located from? If you're joining us live now, what state are you in? And uh, by all means, you guys can start posting your questions as you have them. Um, and we'll go ahead and dive into our first solicitation. And we just bounce back and forth. That's how we do this. We do this one, one bid, and then we answer questions in the chat. And then we go on to the next bid and then back to the chat. So the first one again is RSD lodging. Let's go ahead and dive in. And welcome everybody. If you are just joining, we just are getting started. We've got about um, an hour ahead of us. So this RSD lodging is due December 9th. So we have around 10 days or so, not a lot of time, but depending on the requirement, there may be enough time to go after this. This is small business set aside. You can see that they're using a hotels NAICS code for this. Um, it is over at Langley Air Force Base um, with the next code being 721110. We do have some upfront information that they're giving us in the SAMNETGOV listing description here. Um, let me see here. They're giving us a point of contact, a bit of repetition, due date, attachments. They are putting a instruction to offers but it does not appear that they're fleshing that out. So we are just going to pretty much rely on our attachments. So we do have, starting from the bottom, we have an RSD schedule. We have attachment to lodging adequacy standards per diem reporting procedures, uh, lodging tracker. Okay, so these are gonna be like supporting attachments. Um, and then we have the statement of work, the PWS. Then we have the pricing schedule. We have a information for lodging sheet. And then we actually have the request for quote, which appears to be the solicitation document itself, which we'll go ahead and get started with that document. Okay, so this is about 13 pages, really not too long at all. Again, here, they're just repeating the attachments that they have, reminding us this is 100% satisfied for small business. This is a request for quote. 
And I know sometimes you guys get caught up of like, you know, is it an RFQ or RFP? It doesn't matter so much if it's an RFQ or RFP, a request for quote or a request for proposal. That's not what you should be focused on. What you should be focused on is reading to see what contracting is asking from you in your response, because that's going to dictate what you need to put together, whether it's an RFQ, RFQ or an RFP anyways. Okay. They're saying um, addendum uh, for these instruction offers, offers shall submit an electronic copy of their quote to Desiree Santos. Complete submissions include the following. Number one, the price schedule, which we will look at. Number two, a listing of comparable projects completed during the past three years. So this we're looking at past previous projects, um, past performances. Number three, list of hotels that will be utilized for this requirement and then assigned information sheet. So this is going to make up your response. Now there may be additional things, but they're saying complete submissions include these four items. Failure to provide complete submission uh, will result in um, your submission not being considered for a contract award. To be eligible, you must be registered in SAM. We already know this. And we have our FAR clauses some reps and certs and definitions, covered telecom. And it looks like that takes us to the end of this document. Okay. So not terribly a lot in there. I do want to look at the pricing schedule next. Let's see here. Get that pulled up. Okay. So our pricing schedule is going to be broken down in terms of months or rooms, like nights, individual days, and then a calculated extended price. Pretty straightforward when it comes to lodging and rooms. They are asking for a PM though, and they are allowing you to price out for a PM for nine months. We're not seeing this roll over to 2024 in terms of the period of performance and we are seeing a it looks like uh january through september for the pm but then it looks like they're breaking down location along with periods so we have hampton roads january 1 through 31 okay then we have richmond january 1 through 31 we have uh, chester january 1 through 31 and then we go to, back to Hampton Roads for February 1, 28th. So um, that continues through, looks like March, April, May, June, July, August, and then of course, September. So really straightforward to price, okay? You see the variation um, in rooms is great, ranging from like three, three rooms or three room nights, I should say, up to like 200 room nights. So actually, I, I like this contract quite a bit in terms of the, the, the potential to really get some great experience doing this because it's going to be longer than a weekend. It's, it's like a full nine months. Um, and you will make some money on this. And you will get a lot of face time with your customer. And I think just a lot of potential, really, really, uh, really solid things out of this contract. Um, there's a number of other attachments here looking through to see what would be most helpful for you guys and welcome everybody who's just jumping on joining. We're looking at our first bid. We've got four queued up for today. If you haven't, let me know in the chat what state you are from so we can see how much, um, how many peeps we got from all around the, the country here. Always awesome to see this information sheet lodging. They did reference this as part of the, the quote proposal. So I think, um, <laughs> You know, this is definitely uh, worth looking at. But then we pull it up, we see how simple and basic it is. It's just capturing your company information. Um, I had a recent conversation with one of our bid team members um, on our on one of our coaching calls this past week. And actually, it was just yesterday. I'm getting things discombobulated because of the holiday here. Uh, it was just yesterday. Um, and the question was about, like, what do I put in my technical response? You know, and I had to back into that question and I'm not shy at reminding anybody 
why are you working on a technical response if we don't know the government is even asking for a technical narrative or a technical write-up as part of your, your response, whether it's a quote or a proposal? Um, so we went and we digged into the dug into the solicitation together. And that's part of what we do on the calls and bid team. I look at your bids with you. I dig into it. You know, we spend 20 minutes, um, 30 minutes, sometimes looking at it together. And I, I found within like three minutes, but I wanted this individual on our bid team to, to see and, and kind of go through the motion themselves to realize they're, hey, they're not asking for this. So this question that you're, you're asking me is very kind of presupposed because you're just assuming and you're approaching every bid thinking there's going to be a technical, technical, technical required. And that's not the answer. The answer is every bid is different. You have to learn to read before you can write. You have to walk before you can run. So in three minutes, I was able to, without ever having looked at that, that contract before, find out that, hey, there, there is no technical. So why are we asking questions about the technical? So it ended up being a relief um, that this individual didn't need to, to do that because there wasn't a lot of time left on the due date. Um, but it was uh, it was the the point. It was the, the principle of the thing. You don't want to assume that you're putting something in your proposal without first seeing exactly what the government has asked for. That's how we write proposals. That's how we write technical responses. We read and we find exactly what they're asking for. Okay. So I thought that was a great learning um, opportunity. And it's something that I, you know, as I come across this, you know, I can definitely share it with, with you guys as well. So let's go ahead and check in with the chat. I think that's enough for this particular first bid. Um, go ahead and close that out. And hello, everybody. We've got D Felder uh, catching a live finally. Hello. Yes, you finally, finally caught the live. Welcome. Um, we also have uh, Danny uh, Gembliuk from Portland, Oregon, if I pronounce that correctly. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. We have Anthony uh, Battle from North Carolina. What's going on? Um, I'm new. Just found you yesterday from California. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's lots of videos, lots of material to explore. We have our um, our free uh, master class. Make sure you check that out at govkidmethod.com. D Felder, if you're new and anybody else who's like brand new, um, definitely lots of resources for you to check out and kind of peruse. Isaac Watkins, love your content. Uh, new York City here. Awesome. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Yeah, and uh, hello, everybody uh, in the chat. We got Kimberly, we got Major Davis. Awesome, guys. Yeah, and if you have questions, um, we also answer questions on these live um, as we go in between bids. So if you have anything that you have going on in your GovCon business, you recently won a contract, anything like that, you just want to shout out. Um, that's something that's really cool to share with the community. But yeah, keep the questions coming as you have them, and then we will keep going through the bids. Major Davis says, just received my cage coach today, which my friend means, as you know, you can start bidding. So that is a huge celebration, especially since the Sam lag has been pretty strong uh, the better part of this year. Um, finally getting that is a huge relief for, for everybody who goes through that process. So congrats on that for sure. Let's go ahead and look at our bid number two for today. Um, furniture management section services. I selected this because I was just curious myself, what exactly do they mean by furniture management section services? I have some ideas, but since I don't look at these ahead of time, um, I was like, let's just see what this is all about. We are seeing Alaska time zone. This is due December 21st. Small business set aside with a facilities support services NAICS code, a NAICS code that I like quite a bit because um, not only is there a lot of great work under this NAICS code 561210, um, there's a variety of different services procured under this NAICS code because what is facility support? It can be a lot of things. So for this reason, I even like seeing this NAICS code used sometimes for a primary NAICS code for businesses that are getting set up that think your umbrella of services may be a match for this. Um, this is one of the, the few NAICS codes that I actually like a lot for those reasons. Um, but again, place performance is going to be over in Alaska. In terms of attachments, we have, let me see here. We have a wage determination. We have a PWS. We have 
clauses, past performance questionnaire, um, pricing breakdown of sorts. We'll, we'll definitely check that out. We have the solicitation itself. And then we have mission essential contract functions. Not sure what that is, so we'll probably have time to open that up and dig around too. So we'll go ahead and get started with the solicitation. Solicitation is only six pages, very, very short. They are referencing, um, yep, so we have joint base Elmendorf uh, as the place of performance. We have our attachments just as reminders here, everything we just went through. Um, what do we have? Points of contact, Sam, please provide this company information. It's almost like that one page that we saw on bid number one a few minutes ago where this wanted to capture your company information as a snapshot. They are talking about a site visit. And again, I just want to remind everybody, what is this again? Furniture management section services as we start to read through this. A site visit is scheduled for December 6th, about a week from now. You're encouraged to attend. We're not seeing the word mandatory. Sometimes when you all are looking at bids and you're reading about site visits, if it says mandatory, it's mandatory. Meaning if your company's representation is not on that sign in list, your bid is not going to be evaluated. That's typically the message contracting is trying to get across to you, um, which means at all, at all costs, like if you're interested in it, like have a sub go, like have somebody attend so that you can still get that ticket to play and, and, and go after the bid. But they're saying in this case, vendors are encouraged to attend. We're not seeing mandatory. The meeting point will be at the visitor center. So I visit will cover warehouse locations. Attendees are urged to arrive at the gate no later, later than 8 a.m. Okay, what else do we have going on? The evaluation. Contract award will be made using simplified acquisition procedures. So we know this is gonna be under 250K. Uh, reflecting the latest uh, SAT, Simplified Acquisition Threshold Limits. The government will award a contract resulting from this solicitation to the responsible offers whose offer conformed um, yada, 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 is most advantageous to the government, price and other factors considered. So let's see what are those other factors. Number one, they are talking about the price. So price A and B. And this is giving us a lot of information, right? Because they're telling us the base year is, let's see, I'm not sure what this time six is. We'll have to figure that out, but there's, they're representing a base year and option four option years. So it's going to be five-year contract, which, you know, is also interesting if this is going to be um, under 250K. Let's see here. So the vendor's total offered price will be formulated by multiplying the quantities identified in the pricing worksheet, which I think we're going to have to glance at because we don't even really know what this work is yet. Um, this wasn't an, there wasn't enough um, common sense information to like put together what this is because again, it's furniture management section services. Um, so let's pause this for a second and we're just going to glance at this offer pricing document to see if it can give us a better inside look into what's going on. And we can also take a look at the statement of work, which is really what you wanna be looking at if you're trying to learn the actual, you know, description of the job itself. But here we have pricing cleanse. You guys always hear me talk about pricing cleanse. Why do I call them cleanse? That's because what that's what they're called, the contract line item numbers. These things here, 0001, 0002, that, those represent the base period. Anytime you see the zeros, and then when it kicks over to like 1001 or 2001, that represents the, the option years. So as we come down here, you can see 1001, 1002, and then 2001, 2002. And that'll go all the way down to the four option years. So it's 4001, 4002 for the option years. Um, but aside from that, we're seeing warehouse operations, so warehouse ops and administration. Okay, sounds like services, sounds like hours, sounds like people. Um, delivery and pickup of items, emergency call outs, furnishing and appliance repair service calls. So this is sounding like warm bodies, right? And we're seeing here, we're seeing hours, we're seeing um, 12 months here, but then we're seeing 2,100 jobs. So we're seeing like three or four, we're seeing lot. 
like four different units of issue months jobs hours lots okay so there's a lots going on here <laughs> but it is looking more like it did not provide okay yes yeah, so we're going to pause this one too and we're going to come full circle in a minute but i also have to look at the statement of work now and, and you see you guys do you see i want to back off for a second do you see um hang on a second i'm seeing yeah we there's something we need to take out of the chat here I need to block somebody here for inappropriate content man inappropriate content on a government contracting youtube channel how desperate must you be that's insane i mean government contracting so boring i, I understand spicing it up but we don't have to post um uh, x-rated things here in the, in the chat guys like it's okay um but all right we've got that taken care of and i totally forgot what i was going to say uh, apologies so i guess let's just bounce back and i'll probably think of it <laughs> um let's let's bounce back to the statement of work. Oh yeah, here's what I was gonna say, sorry. What I was going to tell you is, is the approach to reading these documents. It's like, I tell everybody, it's like putting a puzzle together. So you should not read a solicitation from start to finish. You should also not read line by line, word by word, okay? It's more of like an Easter egg hunt. Reading government contracts, reading government solicitations, attachments, these documents, should be like an Easter egg hunt for you. And we should all be trying to put together a puzzle, or you could also think of it as like trying to put together a story, trying to make sense of a story. And we do that by like starting with whatever starting pieces we have, which can be like the name of the job, or if we wanna start with the statement of work, or uh, maybe the, the pricing um, schedule that they give us, so the pricing cleanse give us a lot of information. Um, so depending on what we kind of have to work with, as a low hanging fruit in terms of obvious information, we start with that. And then based on what we have, we, we build on top of that to try and complete the puzzle or complete the story. And so we start an Easter egg hunt approach where we start looking for specific things um, to try and make this, this puzzle make sense. Okay. So that, that is a, a way that I find works really well um, because it allows you to be more organic you don't want to be so rigid in your approach to reading these solicitation documents because you can invest a lot of time and still not get what you want. So instead, it's better to be looking specifically for what you want and then going through the documents, trying to find it. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I think you you guys all, you probably get a sense of that from if you're watching these, these live trainings, you see I'm pretty much all over the place. It's more like, you know, painting a picture. You're just like, you're all over. Um, there's not just one standard way to start reading through this stuff so anyways we find ourselves here at the statement of work it's 40 pages long performance of work statement pws and from here i'm just trying to learn a bit more about the jobs itself you know because we learned from the pricing cleanse um that this is seeming more like warm bodies this is seeming more like you know hours people services and because I didn't know what furniture management services is, right? I, I had some guesses and um, it is shaping up to be the, the way that I was thinking it was kind of more like a logistics type thing. Um, we're just looking to kind of bullet point and nail down those, those suspicions to, to put the puzzle together here. Contractor shall provide customer support functions to include producing and providing a local procedure brochure to provided customers in various ways, such as hard copy, website, email. And this is a brochure that will be approved by the court. There's a lot of these things. That's just like one little micro task. Um, you're going to be helping with receiving furnishings and appliances from customers, coordinating and scheduling uh, walk-ins and pickups, keeping a back order listing for items that are not available by item and date of request. Assist customers in a professional and courteous manner by phone, computer, or in person. Okay, we're starting to get an idea. Pickup and delivery shall be to housing located within a 50 mile radius. Okay, so we're also thinking of like, uh, this is the delivery and pickup of those items. Okay, so 
delivery and pickup of items, customer support functions, you know, that's what the customer service is, warehouse management and receiving. So this is definitely, definitely people. And this is furnishings management program as the main heading. And these are the, the, the major scope items. Okay. So it definitely confirms the suspicion, the suspicions of what we were thinking the work is. Um, when it comes to pricing for this, it's a little bit more complicated now that we know what this is for because, and, and it would just require a more in-depth, where's my sheet at time allotment or time investment because this is what they want us to price. You have to put your pricing here, right? Um, I'm good with like 25 hours for emergency callouts because you can easily price that um, 2,100 jobs. And that's going to be like delivery and pickup within a 50 mile radius. Okay. You can probably work with that um, warehouse operations and administration. You're going to just be pricing that out per monthly. But with this, we don't know how many people, okay? We don't know how many people. You don't need to know how many people with the 2,100 deliveries because it's just 2,100 deliveries. It doesn't matter if you have, you know, arguably one person doing it or 10 people doing it. It is going to have to fit within this time, time range. But you're just pricing per delivery, and that's what matters. Furnishings and appliance repair service calls. Okay, these are 620 service calls. So that's pretty quantifiable as well. Cleaning of day room furniture. So it's 20 cleanings. That's not too bad. And then parts and materials, one lot, um, not to exceed 12,000. They're giving you the number for that. So you don't even have to calculate that. So the biggest thing for me on this one is looking more into, and this is where like putting the puzzle together, the next puzzle piece I would be looking for is looking to learn more information about this warehouse ops and administration to, to, to determine how many how many people? And they are saying sections 1.3, 1, 2, 3, and 5 of the PWS. And we could see what we could garnish from that. But this is ex this is exactly what we were just reading. And it doesn't come out and tell you. And I, I kind of already was looking for that secretly. So that's why I'm saying this is something that, you know, we would either have to inquire to contracting, submit RFIs, um, there is a possibility for a site visit for this. They said a site visit is encouraged. So I would definitely encourage going to the site visit because you may see incumbent employees doing this right now when it comes to like staffing contracts, if there is uh, site visits for those. What I used to do is I would focus on like, okay, there's a person there, there's a person there, there's a person there. Because a lot of times with contracts, the, the government will not tell you how many people are doing it because they want you to propose how many people you as an expert, you think you could do it for. And if you propose less and you can do it for less then you're going to be saving the government money, right? You're going to be saving tax payers dollars, right? That's the whole name of the game that contracting plays without, you know, limiting the service they're getting without suffering, you know, for the service that they're getting. That's why they will withhold that information sometimes. So I'm not sure if they're withholding it or we just don't have that piece of information yet, but I think that would be a driving piece of information to move forward on this type of bid. And like I said, you could find that information out on the site visit if, you know, you want to go to, go to Alaska, <laughs> um, which hey, I actually would love to go to Alaska. Um, all right, what's going on in the chat, guys? I know we spent a little bit. We only have four today, so we're, we're spending a little bit more time than usual on these bids. John says, uh, still can't upload my next codes. They turned over the issue to tech support. <laughs> Got it, John. Sorry to hear that. Um, hopefully, they can um, get that taken care of. Um, Omar says, I finally got my cage code last week. Awesome. You got your cage code as well. I first applied in September. So September, October, November. So yeah, it's taking uh, two or three months, but it also depends if you are having to uh, answer questions like IRS TIN mismatch, or if you proposed a virtual address instead of a physical address, 
there's a number of things that can cause SAM.gov registrations to be delayed just aside from SAM.gov itself. That is uh, something that's like ongoing. It's an ongoing thing. All right, awesome, guys. Go ahead and look at our bid number three for the day. And if you have any questions related to your government contracting, feel free to just drop those. And let's go ahead and look at bid number three. For janitorial services, Kichi Gorge Visitor Center. Hopefully I'm saying that properly. Um, Department of the Army. This is due today. So this would be more of an, an example than something practical. Small business set aside. 561720 janitorial services. Not much in the listing description. They're saying uh, this is Army Corps engineers. They're saying they're issuing a pre solicitation. So that's interesting, right? Because this is a solicitation. This is not a pre solicitation. So they could have not updated their verbiage. Not sure. terms of uh, documents, we only have three here. We have the solicitation, and then we have amendments one and two for this. Jennifer M. Samella uh, for USACE is the POC in contracting. Let's look at this solicitation. And by the way, guys, if you're liking um, getting value from this or liking the video, smash the like button on the uh on the video click the like button it helps the algorithm you know what to do and if this, this is your first um time catching a live let me know in the chat first time and uh if you're watching and you're not subscribed yet consider subscribing to the channel for more trainings just like this one so we start with the sf1449 form leading into delivery schedule which is empty and again reminding ourselves what this is for janitorial services so there should be a delivery schedule, but it's empty. Um, reps and certs. And we only have three attachments total on this. So we are relying more heavily on this solicitation doc. So hopefully it gives us something helpful. In terms of evaluation, instruction to offers, something like that. They're saying government property provided is going to be toilet paper, liquid soap, trash bags, paper towels, air freshener, and wax sanitary napkin bags. Um, this is also known as GFE, government furnished um, you know, equipment or materials. Yeah, literally like nothing here um, at all, except for our reps and certs and our clauses and some definitions. So all we have is the, the SF 1449 form to print date and sign. So we will have to rely on our amendments. This is actually crazy because we don't even have pricing cleanse. Are they going to give us something else here? What is this first amendment? This amendment is necessary to revise the solicitation to include the text instruction to vendors. Told you guys, <laughs> they, they like were missing that stuff. Um, security requirements, the bid schedule, the statement of work and the wage determinations. Holy crap. So they're like, oh yeah, by the way, here's the entire remaining part of the solicitation. Thanks. So here's the bid schedule. So now this gives us something to price. This is going to be uh, 270 restroom cleanings at the visitor center, and then 52 maintenance cleanings at the visitor center. That's what they want you to price. If you're working with a sub on this, this is what you need your sub to price. And then we have a, so that would be a base, year. Then we have option year for 271 restroom cleanings and 52 maintenances. And that's it. Okay. So one base, one option, very straightforward pricing. This should not be hard to get from your subs if you're using a sub. And again, this is total small business set aside. So you should be able to have no problem um, doing a legal middleman type thing. If that's the route that you probably would want to go for something like this. They've highlighted the bid schedule must be completed and submitted for a quote to be considered complete. So here's your company information to, to, to capture these lines. Um, statement of work here, tell you more about what the, um, the maintenance uh, at the visitor center. So it's a two-story building. You're saying a total of 3,194 square feet, 3,194. 
you can arrange a site visit if you want, um, but just by contacting Heather Morse, you do not have to, like there's not a predetermined one. You just set up your own site visit. Again, they're uh, validating base plus one option year. This work is going to start January 1st. So from the, the real time, like a month from today or so, uh, pretty close to it. And then the option year to go through 2024. Let's see here. And again, this is... They had to do an amendment because they left all this out. And there is one more amendment to look at. So we will see. Submittals are things that you need to submit to the government once like once you're doing the work. That's why it says like within 30 days of the contract award. So they're going to want to see an APP plan, an accident prevention plan, um, activity hazard analysis, cleaning products, just a list um, with your bio preferred stuff on there and a safety data sheet, which they would uh, provide you. Um, Again, they're telling you what's going to be provided by you, which is very nice. And then what's provided by the government. So there's really no guessing in this. Sometimes there is a bit of guessing, not in this one though. So I like that. Again, here's the bio preferred, um, environmentally preferred products. They always push that on janitorial contracts and most clean, like any cleaning type of contracts. And then again, more specifically, the, the work you or your employee or a sub would be doing is this restroom cleaning, maintenance cleaning, and then they break down the summer schedule, winter schedule, holiday schedule. And then they're really breaking down like what's in the restrooms. Okay. So like seven sinks, three urinals, nine toilets, like all of the, all of the nitty gritty details. We do have a wage termination and then that's it. So I have not seen, even though they, they referenced it, remember in the amendment, Unless I forgot. Instruction to vendors. We haven't seen a true like instruction to, to offer. It's just an instruction to vendors where they're asking for your company information. They're asking for these pricing cleans be completed. The SF 1449 form. There were those reps and certs that you have to complete on the original solicitation, because this is an amendment. And because this is an amendment, you have to also formally acknowledge this by print dating and signing this as well. So you have to attach this along with the original solicitation SF-1449 form, which we have right here. Okay, so you're gonna be attaching multiple like uh, government attachments, unless you're gonna be like extracting them and putting them together into one document using Adobe or something. If you wanted to, to do that, you could do that as well. For sure, for sure. All right, cool. So checking the chat here. All right, uh, so Kevin says, what do you think of Unison Marketplace to bid? Um, I mean, it's okay. What I say is you're probably not gonna make a lot of money. Um, Unison is all about procurement and it's about like supplies and commodities. So if you're looking to do services, you're not gonna probably spend any time on, on Unison. Um, you will find some products and commodities on Unison. Uh, Unison is a reverse auction, whereas a race to the bottom pricing, almost like if you were to try to like sell stuff on, on Amazon, like you have to compete with all these other you know, uh, bidders. So even though that competition isn't, isn't there per se, it is, but um, a Amazon is very much a race to the bottom pricing is my point. And that is what Unison is as well. And that is because the government is, is procuring items on there, supplies on there that they know you're not going to be able to mess up. And so they just want it for the cheapest price. So they're not worried about the quality because they're controlling the quality by asking for name brand or whatever the thing is, like you could only get it one way or whatever. So there's no real way for you as a contractor to mess that up. So now they're just wanting the contractor who's going to take the smallest amount of margin on it as possible. So if you know that is the name of the game on Unison, you have to ask yourself, what is the long-term opportunity for your business? And I just don't think it's there for most people. Um, then the other thing, a lot of people say, well, let me get started. It's easy. I'll get my feet wet. And you, you can, and it's fine. Um, as it relates to like the past performance though, past performance has to be, has to be relevant. 
So like if you ultimately want to end up in services and you're like, let me get my feet wet with Unison and doing procurements, well, it's not going to do anything for your past performance because you're not going to um, say, hey, I delivered these products or these supplies and now I'm going to cite that past performance for a staffing contract or janitorial contract or whatever the services you want to go after um, because it's not a relevant project, right? So it won't be a past performance uh builder for you. So all in all, I don't really love it. And that is why you guys do not see me um, like really ever uh, cover Unison um, or even like just a lot of procurement stuff in general, because it, I don't think it's a long term model. I, I'm everybody who knows me knows that I'm all in on services and I'm, I'm very upfront about that. I'm um, intuitive tie. I've submitted my registration three times. Third time is the charm. Hopefully. Hey, I definitely feel you on that one tie. Uh, if it's just a matter of correcting information, going back and forth, it happens to the best of us. And hopefully third time is the charm. We have Kay Murray out of Fort Worth, Texas, representing Texas. Kay Murray, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out with us. Trucking Simple. Do you know about trucking jobs as an owner operator with um, own truck and trailer? So the thing is, I, a lot of people want to come into like trucking into the government contracting space. The number one thing that I'm seeing with this is there is a a mismatch between what you guys are doing in the commercial space or what you're doing with your existing job or, Hey, listen, I hear from so many people that they're like, Oh, I'm following this person for trucking. You know, I've taken their course or I'm, I'm under their coaching or, or, or whatever I'm, I'm using their trucking material. And then Derek, I want you to be the GovCon guy. So then I want to put these things together. And I want to do GovCon trucking. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That's the number one thing that I'm seeing. Um, what you need to do, I tell everybody, you need to spend an uncomfortable amount of time on SAM.gov first, looking at what trucking opportunities exist on SAM. I can't tell you. I can't tell anybody anything. You guys have to go into SAM and you have to find what is the opportunity there for you, i.e. what is the government buying, i.e. E, what are the needs that the government has. Um, what ends up happening is like you're people are saying, Hey, I'm doing this commercial space. I'm going to give this to the government. And then you're not finding the bids or you're not finding the bids in the way, right. That you think you're going to be finding them because of the way you think it is or the way that it is for you in the commercial space is the way that you're thinking it's going to be on government contracting. And it's just not. So you need to figure that out right away, like really quickly um, making those assumptions are really going to really going to hurt you. Um, that's like a lot of the feedback that I hear from people that are trying to come from trucking. They'll spend a lot of time and they're like, Derek, I'm not seeing all the stuff that I, I do in the commercial space. And it's like, okay, well, good. Like, I'm glad that you found that out. Hopefully you found that out before, you know, someone's selling you like a dream or something, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why I don't do that. I don't say, oh yeah, like it's just, you know, I'm not, I'm not the get rich quick guy. I'm the Go spend an uncomfortable amount of time on Sam and figure it out. And if you see this opportunity there for you, then learn how to go after the work. But if you don't have that proof of concept, if you don't have a viable business model to work with, then there's no point of moving on to learn how to do this. Like you can't put the cart before the horse. I hope that makes sense. And that's a soapbox. That's um, that's for everybody in every niche, not just for trucking. Uh, Kevin says, how many NAICS codes can you have? You can have as many as you want, but you shouldn't have as many as you want. Um, I would recommend sticking around like a dozen or so. The biggest thing is you can risk appearing to um, be a jack of all trades, uh, master of none. Um, but with that being said, at the same time, contracting is not going to award you, not going to not award you a contract because you have 20 NAICS codes. Okay. They're not going to not award you. But if you're trying to do, uh, I guess, marketing and capability briefings, I've been through meetings where, con you know, a, a an Oz Debu or a small business specialist was like, why do you have so many NAICS codes? We don't have faith in your company, blah, 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 blah. Well, we did do all these things and they just didn't understand that. So I just want to prepare you for what you could go against. If you want to have more NAICS codes than say like a dozen or so, you could get that type of feedback. Um, and I just, I recommend updating your NAICS codes regularly anyways, refreshing, add, edit, delete those out of there. If you do that, you shouldn't end up um, accruing too many NAICS codes anyways. What's going on, Ali? Hey guys, 
Uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. What's going on, Ali? Good to see you, man, as always. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. And Kay Murray, first time on your live. Awesome, awesome. Um, Omar, I had to verify my physical address. That took about two months. Got it. That will do it. Um, going back and forth with the Federal Service Desk for sure. Major Davis, I am disabled veteran. Should I get that set aside certification? Um, my feedback on that is the same for everybody. It's that I recommend that you learn how to bid and you win a few contracts first before pursuing the set asides because most will use chasing the set asides as a reason to not learn how to bid. If you can manage doing both at the same time, by all means, go and do it, okay? It will give you more opportunities, but that is not what most do. Most will wait three, six, nine, 12 months to start bidding and going after contracts because they want to have all their ducks in a row and they want to line everything up really pretty. I'm saying no, start messy and figure it out as you go. Um, and at a certain time, you can grow into those set-asides. Um, if you're wanting to win contracts, if you're actually wanting to make money, do that. If you don't actually want to win anything, you if you just want to like, um, and this is for everybody, if you just want to be in your head and play the game and, and kind of get excited about this idea, then yes, go around, chase all the shiny objects, collect them like they're Pokemon. Um, that will definitely keep you very busy. That will take a lot of your money and then you'll have nothing to show for it. Um, and that's for that's for everybody. Uh, but for those of you who want to to um, to win contracts, you actually want to make money, you want to build a business, you want to do this long term, you need to start bidding. You need to start playing the numbers game. You need to start bidding on quality, right? But you also need to play quantity. So it's the yin and the yang, you know. And and the other thing, guys, quality comes from quantity. The more you do, the better you get. Okay. I've had so many calls where people they didn't win anything. And they're like, Derek, what did I do wrong? I said, well, how many bids did you go after for the year? And they said two because they, they waited for the perfect bid. And I said, okay, well, that's the problem. If you did, if you did 10, if you did a dozen, if you did 15, um, you may have won one, two or three. And then we would be having like a, a happy conversation instead of a, what did I do wrong conversation? You didn't do anything wrong. You just didn't do enough of the right stuff. And then when you do enough of the right stuff, you get better at it. So then the quality comes, right? Your proposals get more dialed in. You get more feedback from contracting. You start to find the bids more that you want to go after. And the ones you thought you wanted to go after, you realize, I don't really want to go after that. I was making some assumptions and I had to get out of my own head with that. That's like what your six to nine months looks like. That's all the stuff that you should be doing. Um, and, and if you're feeling that way, that means you're walking the journey. If, if you're not and you're kind of on the sidelines, I recommend that you just kind of jump in if you're at all serious about making money and, and building a business with this stuff. That's just the honest truth that I don't think most people say. And that's what I try to do on the channel. That's really my message. Um, like build your parachute on the way down type of thing. I, I mean, yeah, for sure. Because if you never jump, there's no point of needing the parachute, right? Um, that's what business is. That's what being an entrepreneur is. It's about taking risks. If you're too afraid to take the risk to make the jump, it doesn't, you know, you, you can't, there's no way to eliminate all the risk. There's no way to plan it out perfect before you do it. You just have to do it. And then you will, you will show up, you will rise to the occasion, but you have to give yourself the opportunity to do that. Um, and too many are held back by that fear. That, that's why we got bid team guys. It, it's literally why we have bid team. What does this say under bid team? It says building impossible dreams. Okay. Like that's a scary thing. People who are doing bid team, they have identified a reason bigger than themselves why they want to do this. And that allows them to take those jumps. It allows them to push through risk. Whereas if you're, if you're just doing this, say for yourself um, or selfish reasons or reasons that are maybe not motivating to you, it's not going to be enough to push you. It's interesting. The way we were designed, I don't know whether God set us up this way or whatever, but we do more for others than we do for ourselves. So once we align to, you know, building like these huge dreams, then it's like, oh my gosh, like I don't even have time to ask these questions. I don't have time to be caught up in my head because I've got to show up because I know I've got to do this thing because I want this to be paid off like for my kids or I want to set this thing up so, you know, I can be at home more or like whatever that is for you. Or I want to create opportunities for other people um, because we're not on this planet for a long time and we want to like do something while we're here. That is what 
allows you to take these jumps and, and do the things that you need to do. And the, the, the difference that I see genuinely from speaking with hundreds and thousands of people is that some people, unfortunately, it's the minority of people, the smaller group of people that are actually doing this and they're winning and they're all in. They have strong reasons that are greater than themselves that they're that they're doing this, which really means they're going to they're going to do this no matter what, like they're going to figure it out. And then there's the big group of people over here. It's the majority. And um, we kind of know what that looks like. So the goal is to just create the opportunity for those who who want to show up, go after something that's bigger than themselves. Um, then you find those internal resources to to push through these things of uncertainty and risk and take the jump to allow yourself to have the parachute that opens up, like you said. And um, then that's where all the magic happens. You know, you just got to take that jump. So. Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Um, Christian, uh, hello from uh, MO from Missouri. Uh, from For the beginners, what systems back office do you recommend? Um, back office, you're just talking about like invoicing and stuff. Um, I recommend you work with accountant. Um, accountants usually recommend that you work with, with QuickBooks. Um, invoicing for the government, though, it's, it's the government system. So it's going to be something like wide area workflow. So whatever you want to use internally to generate your own invoices, like I said, um, team up with your accountant or use QuickBooks or, you know, something easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. But then when it comes to submitting the information to the government, um, they're going to have their own systems and they're going to have the POCs that are going to like tell you what you need to do or, you know, help you through that process. And it can be a long process getting started. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but that's kind of kind of how it works. D Felder, you're amazing. I appreciate the encouragement as well as informative walkthroughs. 100. percent um, Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the feedback. We have one more bid, and we're almost out of time, but we do have enough time, I think, to get through this. We'll we'll see how it goes. Organizational Consultant Services, Department of Commerce. This is due December 5th, so about a week from now. Small business set aside. 541990, another NAICS code that I that I like um, for all other professional, scientific, and technical services. Again, I like NAICS codes like these because we see a variety of different services that are um, attractive to government contracting businesses, I would say, um, under NAICS codes like this. And hey, this is in Honolulu, Hawaii, so that's kind of cool too. We do have a lot of information posted into the listing body description for this one. Quickly decipher through this. Um, they're talking about executive coach to enhance leadership skills of senior managers. Okay. Task one, conduct quarterly meetings. Task two, provide feedback to the board of directors. Uh, task three, provide training coaching on conflict management. Task four, facilitate meetings or workshops. Number five, uh, team building. Number six, uh, design customized surveys. Number seven, perform a survey analysis, number eight, uh, support the board of directors. So like those eight things, okay? This is looking like providing executive coaching, one or more people. Um, they are saying base plus two option years with around 160 hours or exactly 160 hours per year. So for three years, base plus two. Let's see here. Did I read this? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and then they're also doing a, okay, so there's a base 160, but then there's an additional option, not the option year yet, but it's an option on the base, if that makes sense, to add up to another 80 hours. So meaning that base could be 240, okay? If, if you need it. And that's why they're kind of putting those optional buckets of money in addition to option years one and two. I know it sounds a little confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. This work is going to start. This is actually a very good contract. Um, it's probably just going to be one person based on these hours, one executive coach out in Honolulu, Hawaii. So if you want to like place a person and you want to visit Hawaii at the same time, um, might be a cool contract for you to go to go uh, after. So submit your quotes on Word, register in SAM, provide all evaluation criteria, which we'll have to see what that is. Include at least two references for similar services, including phone number, 
um, email address. References will be checked. And what you could use is the references for the executive coach that you would probably be proposing. Um, so not other executive coaching contracts that your company has done, but hey, we've got Bob or we've got Sandy. And then what are two other executive coaching gigs Bob or Sandy has done? We're going to include those. Um, and they're going to check those references and say, wow, you know, they're going to call and like, yeah, Bob was awesome. Like Bob, you know, increased our, you know, productivity by 30%. Um, or, you know, Sandy uh, totally changed our communication style. And, and now we're doing more with less, you know, something like that. Here's the evaluation that they were talking about, though. Number one, technical approach and capability. So your approach to performing the contract requirements and your capabilities to successfully perform this contract. Um, submission must include a resume, as we kind of were just alluding to, and examples of previous work. Okay, so that's your number one thing you need to include in your proposal response, a technical approach and capability for that. Number two, past performance. Coach, I'll include at least two references for similar services, including, so this is a repeat of the actual reference piece that we were talking about. And then three is the pricing. Government tends to award a trade-off. So it's not necessarily going to be lowest price, could be uh, like a best value trade-off. Let's see. It's not saying it just yet, but um, for our attachments, we have the solicitation and then the PWS. So we'll see um, if we see more about that in there. All right, cool guys. Again, if you're liking the video, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new or you're just watching and you're not subscribed. If you just joined, we are going through our fourth bid of the day. And it's going to be for executive coaching services out of Hawaii. Okay, so we're seeing, you know, what, what they like to do, guys. And some of you already know this, but it, it's like a copy and paste job. You'll see a lot of copy and paste stuff. Um, so all this stuff here that we kind of just went through is now what we're like. It's, it's this stuff. So I'm kind of quickly going through that because we just read it. Otherwise, it's it's very important. What do we have here? Oh, just looking to see if there's anything else like pricing cleanse or anything like that. And we're probably not going to be seeing that. And we'll uh, refer to our PWS, see if we have anything else there to work with. This is, let's see, seven pages, PWS, pretty straightforward. This is going to talk just as a uh, PWS does, the specific tasks, right? So this is the information, like if you were um, recruiting or hiring somebody, these are the specific tasks that, again, we went through the same deck of listing and description. This is their job. These are the things they're going to be doing. Um, and again, this is nice because they're giving us some additional information, talking about PhD or equivalent, five years experience in organizational consulting, five years plus experience in executive coaching. And you must have a preference on the island of a, or a presence rather, on the island of Oahu. Which, you know, you'd probably be demonstrating in the resume that you propose. So we have our option years. So that's what we would base our pricing off of. We know we need to do resume. They are asking for those references slash past performance um, and that technical approach. So that is what we would be including in our proposal response and write up. So awesome guys. Um, there is so much more to learn about bidding and winning on Sam. What we do during these lives guys, it's really just a drop in the bucket, drop in the ocean. If you are looking for a step-by-step -step proven process to follow with weekly coaching to make sure you're doing it right, you may be the next fit for our bid team. If you want, you can learn more and book a call and apply at gupkinmethod.com. Feel free to check that out if you wanted to take things to the next level. Um, great questions today, guys. Congrats. We have a number of people getting awarded their, uh, getting awarded, getting, um, I guess we can call it awarded. Why not? Like what? <laughs> getting awarded their cage codes. I mean, let's, let's hear it. 
Um, that that's pretty exciting. So congrats to you guys as well, of uh, getting that that license that license to get into the game. And I hope that you guys are in the process of getting the game. Um, and once you're in the game, that's where I try to help you on these on these lives to teach you how to walk before you can run. And a lot of people are saying that I need proposal support. I, I need bidding support, Derek. And I'm telling you the number one thing that's going to help you is learning to read these. And that's why I've created, you know, I, I do these shows for free um, and we focus all in on the reading because it's my belief that if you can learn how to read, um, then you can take what you're reading and put it in the response. You can find what's being asked for in your response. So that's why we are really, really focused on this stage of the game, but there is so much more to it. And that's where we fully go into it in our, in our bid team together. But um, either way, that's what we do on the channel to help you guys. Once you get your cage code, once you're ready to jump in the pool and start going after this stuff, and we even answer some you know questions on these lives to get you guys unstuck and motivated or maybe just aligned so that you don't invest a lot of time or a lot of money doing the wrong thing. Some people um, I'm finding just need to kind of get set on the right path. Okay. And so sometimes we try to do that as well. Um, so awesome, guys. I hope you had a great uh, session. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you all on the next Sam Beck of Bids Live. Take care, guys. Um, hope you're enjoying the holidays and we will talk to you all very soon. Take care.